it's championship weekend. It is championship time, now or never. There is no, hopefully this guy turns it around, hopefully this guy pops off, he's due. It's It doesn't matter what you think, what you want. What happens this weekend is cemented. It is official. Week 17 for all the marbles. I'm going to do my best to make sure you get that trophy, that ring, that dollar, that money, that whatever. Whatever's on the line. Whatever's on the line. You know the deal. 35 wide receivers, 30 running backs. I'm going to start with the wide receivers first today. Let's lock in. I'm not going to waste your time. You're here for one reason and one reason only. To fucking win. So let's cook. <laughs> Wide receivers to talk about, I don't, I don't fucking know what we got to do. Rams wide receivers, Niners wide receivers, Alphas, Dogs, there, there's no question about it. They got you this far. I have Puka over Cup. I have Deep over Ayuk. It doesn't matter. If you have either of those, if you have both of those, you start no matter what. But outside of fantasy, I will say something to note. Shout out to Puka Nakua. He is nine receptions in 130 yards away in two games. If he gets nine receptions in 130 yards in his last two games, he sets both rookie records for single season receptions and single season receiving yards in their rook year. So shout out to Puka. Michael Pittman, last week I thought he was going to play. He got concussion symptoms. I said if he does play, he's a must start fringe wide receiver one no matter what. And I'm sticking to that statement. I think he'll be healthier this week. And to be honest, last week was a tough matchup as Atlanta clearly wasn't a great game. Maybe he could have influenced that. Maybe that was the game script we were wanting. But either way, he's still a must start. Uh, Stefan Diggs, look. If you have Stefan Diggs and you're somehow watching this video and somehow in the fantasy championship, shout out to you because you've overcome the definition of adversity. I, I really don't know how you've made it this far. Maybe you've been benching him and doing the right thing. But if you've been playing him and you still made it this far, shout out to you, man. I don't know what to tell you. I could sit here and talk about the targets, the volume, the matchup. For the past month, it just hasn't mattered. But I will say, I will say, if there were a matchup, if there were a game, if there was a moment, it matters. It's now. Versus the Patriots, as a bill, Stephon Diggs averages 104 yards, and we have a six-game sample size. It's not like he's played him twice. Across six games, he averages 104 yards versus the Patriots, and in those six games, seven tutties from Stephon Diggs. I'm not trying to hype you up. I'm not trying to give you false hope. I'm just giving you some concrete numbers that you cannot argue with. Rashi Rice, that's my boy. That's my man. We don't need to talk about him. He's my playoff league winner. Kind of a midweek last week. I, ain't gonna, I, I can't hide away from that, but... I'm always I'm always loving the chief off the Chiefs off of a loss. Raji Rice is gonna win you the league this week. Nico Collins. I think he's still startable right away. CJ Stroud should be playing. He's still the wide receiver seven. Excuse me. He's still the wide receiver seventeen on the year, despite him missing some time, despite CJ Stroud missing some time. Being a top eighteen wide receiver on the year is very impressive, even given some circumstances not bouncing his way. And when Stroud plays this year. Nico is averaging 15 fantasy points per game. The two games Stroud was out or wasn't able to finish, he only put up seven fantasy points. His production doubles when he's got the potential rookie of the year. I think Nakua will win it. I think he should win it. But when he's got the other rookie of the year candidate, that's that's a different topic. That's a different video. Nico Cooks, Titans give up the 10th most fantasy points to wide receivers since week 10. The math is simple. You, you, you get it. Nico's been there. He's done that. He's going to do it again in the championship. Calvin Ridley I have in the top 20-ish. You see right there. I was in on him last week, and thank God he had my back. I don't like, you know, fronting and putting my name on the line for Calvin Ridley back-to-back -back weeks. That's what I'm not all about, but he's been getting the usage. He's been getting the volume. His Jaguars team is in shambles. Just play him. Just play him. T. Higgins. Jamar Chase is expected to be out. He's still not practicing, but even off of the past two performances, I'm not still going to throw him in the top 15. He's still startable. He's still wide receiver two. But the ECR having him around that top 15 range is just a little too rich for me. The Chiefs give the fourth fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. Jaden Reed, I'm still wanting to sign my name on him. Still wanting to write that signature off Jaden Reed. I don't know why. Am I getting biased? I don't even have a reason to like him or the Packers. I just, just my vibes are telling me Jaden Reed is a good fantasy player. In his last six, he's still averaging 13.6 fantasy points per game. That's what you're looking for out of a wide receiver two. In the past six games is the perfect sample size we are looking for. That's not to the moon, but I'm not ranking him at the moon. I'm having him right around that wide receiver two, fringe wide receiver flex range, and that's that's perfect in my mind. Chris Godwin. I got some hate last week having him in the 20s range. A lot of people in the comments wanted him to be this must start like fringe wide receiver one. Am I tripping? Like I, I'm not trying to like say I'm better than you. Or I know more than you, but like still, still Chris Godwin could still be hit or miss. I'm going to keep him right around the same range. Wide receiver two, good flex play. 
He faces the Saints, who have the ninth best pass defense. They give up the ninth fewest points since week 10. But over the past three weeks, the volume, I keep saying volume, it's been there for Chris Godwin. The volume for everyone else, it don't matter. For Chris Godwin, he's had 11 targets in three straight. You can't argue with that. 11 in three straight. Even though Mike Evans is doing his thing, and he always will be, we all know, we also know Mike Evans has a fucking temper tantrum versus the uh, Saints. Maybe maybe we'll play into the psychological opinions and factors, possibilities. Maybe it'll be a Chris Godwin. Pickens, very boomer bust. Look, Tariq Woolen, he's a dog, and he gives up the fewest. He is number one at shutting down big plays against wide receivers. So we got a guy who shuts down big plays. We got a guy who can only make big plays. He doesn't make small ones, only bigs. Cool matchup, the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. We'll see what happens. Very boomer bust. D-Hop. I am very low on D-Hop compared to the ECR. I have him around wide receiver 30, 31. ECR says I'm 16 spots too low on D-Hop. That's like the biggest difference in rankings I had. It, it usually is like never more than 12, let alone 16. Yeah, I'm low on him. I don't trust Ryan Tannehill. If Will Levis is in, it's a little different, but I don't think he's going to play. If he does, check the rankings, and maybe I'll update it, or I will update it if Levis is in. There is no maybe, but maybe my opinion will shift on him when some news breaks. But if Tannehill's in, I'm just not about it. I'm like literally considering him lowering him even more because the usage is not there when Tannehill plays. I think they're going to force feed Derrick Henry against the Texans. Tannehill looked hot dog water. They had Derrick Henry throwing touchdowns last week. They couldn't even trust Ryan Tannehill to do that. Two-minute drill in the game was on the line. A, Ryan Tannehill didn't even look at Z-Hop. B, he was in shambles. He was crumbling. He looked horrible. I'm not doing it. He averages five less points with Ryan Tannehill compared to D-Hop, and five points is a lot in championship weekend. That'll add up. That matters. D-Hop, get him the hell out of here. I'm not a fan. No, sir. Unless unless you have like unless, unless you have a guy outside the top 31, then I'm still living with it. But having him in this 15, 16 range, ridiculous. Uh, I can't believe he's fucking on here, and I have to mention his name, but Demarcus Robinson has scored a touchdown in four straight games. Is it sustainable? I'm not sure. I don't think so. When you got the top alphas and Nakua and Cup at 9 and 10, it's hard to have a third Ram wide receiver in the top 35, but when you score four straight, I, I can't I can't diss you, especially against the Giants where the Rams could absolutely run up the score on them. And then Jerry Judy, if Cortland Sutton's out, sure, maybe, I don't know. Jarrett Siddham's in. It, it's just a sticky situation. They might try and force feed Judy because A. Sutton's out, but now like it's the word is out that Denver's tanking. Now they might try and show that Judy has a value and give him a little bit of juice at the end for trade value. I don't know. I'm, get, I'm reading into it a little too much. I'm getting a little theoretical, but there's worse flex plays out there with Cortland Sutton being out and the Broncos making a shift on to the running backs again if anything i say in this video doesn't add up to an injury report or coach getting fired someone getting benched find the updated rankings to the exact millisecond some news breaks breaks on bdge.co because this video obviously doesn't update as news updates yada 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 again bdge.co to find updated rankings and my full position rankings not just running backs not just wide receivers where you can find kickers quarterbacks tight ends defense super flex whatever the hell you want on to running backs Raheem Oster, I got to talk about the Dolphins every week. I don't know why. Look, his floor, like a bad game for Raheem Mostert, it's 11 points. I know that's not like the crazy, like that's not like championship winning. You you want your guys to drop like a 30 piece. But if you can expect 11 at minimum, you'll take that. Derrick Henry, let's, let's just take a tear jump. Last time he played the Texans, they made this man look like he should retire. He should stop playing football, go home sit on the couch, start a podcast, get off this team, stop playing on the grass, stop playing on the football field, turf, to I don't know where I was getting with the grass, and cut that off at a normal point. I I'm fucking yapping at this point. Either way, he looked horrible. He had 20 touches and 10 yards. That is not Derrick Henry. That is washed up. Like, that's what Dalvin Cook is at this point. But then the next week, he came out and not just ran in a touchdown, he threw one. He, he was on his bounce back. That was against Seattle, who has a bottom five run defense. Texans run defense clearly is an animal, especially against Derrick Henry. But I think with Tannehill in, it's not going to matter. The Titans are going to try and run it back with that same game plan and force feed the rock to Derrick Henry. I just don't think this team trusts the passing game at all with Ryan under center. So usage and a little bit of bounce back, a little bit of do logic. So playing Henry. DeAndre Swift, look, I like Swift. He's the RB14 on the season, and he finally scored a touchdown versus the Giants. He finally didn't get one stolen away from Jalen Hurts, but if you ask me, he cashed in his one time. 
Photo one time, DeAndre Swift already cashed it in, and now I can't trust him to do it again, unfortunately. That's a little, that's not like complete sound logic. That's not fully soundproof, but if you've been watching the Eagles all year, it, it makes sense. However, still fringe RB1, Cardinals give up the most fantasy points to running backs, like literally the most. They're, any run defense, Cardinals is worse than them. Aaron Jones, I think he's a must start. Coming off a 22 touch game, AJ Dillon's still kind of questionable since week 10. Minnesota was given the given up the eighth most fantasy points to running backs. And who doesn't love championship weekend of fantasy football? You're down six, 16 points, 14 points, 11 points, whatever it is. And you got a guy on primetime football for Sunday night. That's that's a fucking movie right there. That that's that's what you look for in championship weekend. Everyone else is settled in. All the lineups are locked. It's just you, one guy, and a certain X amount of points you need when it matters the most. Mm. Mm. That's not happening for any of my leagues. I'm not even in the championship. Hey, Chain. Look, he just isn't getting the workload. I am unfortunately a simple man and get caught up in the buzzwords of like, still has huge upside, still a home run potential, could still be the literal RB1. And therefore, me personally, I'm weak. I'm putting him in that RB2 range. Seven, eight, nine carries is probably not going to get us there, but dude's got a shot. Christian McCaffrey, even though the 49ers crumbled last week, Still ran for 100 yards, still put up a tutty. I know it's not fair to compare A-Chain to CMC by any means, but I think I think A-Chain is going to have a better week this week than the past three. I don't know if that's a hot take by any means, but I think he has a little bit more juice right now than ever. Steelers running backs, for some reason, I got to talk about them every single week, just like the Dolphins running backs. Three straight games, Jalen Warren has four plus receptions. That's a solid floor to be a flex play. That's enough, and he's seeing about seven to 12 carries a game. That's enough usage to where you play him in the flex. Seahawks run defense, not very good. Maybe he'll throw a touchdown versus Seattle defense, just like Derrick Henry, or maybe it'll be Najee Harris. Najee's lost almost all the receiving work. Back-to-back -back weeks, he's had zero targets. Still sees over 12 carries a game. Maybe he'll score. Who knows? Again, Seattle, fourth worst run defense in the NFL. I like both these guys in the flex still, even, a, even on a little bit of a slump they've been in. Championship weekend, I don't mind them. Gus Edwards. I'm starting to like Gus. I'm starting to get a grip on him. I'm starting to have a good feeling. Is Gus going to score this week or not? I've been on the past two weeks. I don't even know if that's a hot streak. I don't even know if that's something for me to be bragging about right now, but I think he might go for a third. I think Gus Edwards, I mean, I don't even know. Again, this doesn't even feel like a bull take. But I think against Miami, no Keith Mitchell, high scoring game, Keep, uh, Gus gets in another one uh Clyde Ertelaire if I if Isaiah Pacheco's out he's playable again I always like the Chiefs coming off a loss I think they're going to run, run up a 30 piece on the Bengals I think they're probably going to cover the spread whatever it is I think it's like seven seven and a half points and I think Clyde could get a touchdown or two benefiting from that I doubt any of you out there in the fantasy playoffs that are in the championship or were in the semifinals last week or in the championship because you, for some reason, desperately played Khalil Herbert. And now you're like, do I play him again? Or maybe you made it to the championship while benching Herbert and you're wondering, do now I play him? I still rather not. I, I like he just, that's just hasn't been his game all year to get 22 carries over 100 yards, a touchdown. That's, that's just not what he's been all season long. Atlanta's a very tough matchup to face. I'm calling it a fluke. Could I be wrong? Could I bite myself in the foot, shoot myself in the foot in, in the fantasy football playoffs in week 16, week 17, when it mattered most? Khalil Herbert was a playoff hero, sure, but I'm not going to die on the hill on the other way and say he is a must start and he is going to be the hero. I'm fine with uh, being the villain and saying he's not. That's your week 17 rankings, people. That's your week 17 rankings. I probably could have mentioned Williams, Javante Williams, fringe RB2. I wish you all the best of luck in the championship weekend, whether you have $1 on the line, bragging rights on the line, $1,000 on the line, your rent money on the line, a trip to Vegas on the line, whatever it is. I wish you the best of luck, and I hope you don't just dominate. I hope you win in a sweater. Because that's, that's what makes it the most fun. Not only the winning, but the thrill, the excitement, the adrenaline you get when winning again. My dream scenario is to have Aaron Jones, or Ty Chandler, or Jay Jettas in the championship weekend on primetime football. And I'm down X points and I need this one player to get X points. Mwah. Again, check bdge.co to find the updated rankings in case these other motherfuckers get benched, break a leg, coaches fired, whatever. And you need to know how that affects everyone else. That'll check and be updated on the rankings of BDG bdge.com. God damn, I can't talk today. Peace, love, good luck. Thank you, and good night. Thanks.